Hi and welcome to another episode of the Getting Things Done podcast from GTD Nordic. I am Martin Rudik and I'm here as always with my good friend and colleague Lars Rotskill Hendriksen or as Lars Rock uh, Hendriksson, uh, Siri would like to call you. And, <laughs> and we'll take that again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Hi and welcome to another episode of the Getting Things Done podcast from GTD Nordic. I am Martin Rövik and I'm here with my good friend and colleague Lars Rotskill Hendriksen. Privet, Lars. Privet, Martin. Good to see you as always and looking forward to recording another episode with you. Our purpose of this podcast is to help you learn GTD or become even better GTD. So as always, we hope that this episode supports you in that. If you're new to GTD, we always recommend you go back and listen to episodes one through six to get an introduction to the basics of GTD. I just heard from a GTD uh, Nordic podcast listener out there that uh, she had listened to those a uh, hundred times. So <laughs> that, wow. I thought that was a nice, uh, nice recommendation. <laughs> Um, now, this is episode 69, and um, today's topic is managing recurring projects. But before we do that, I just wanted to follow up on one thing from last week's episode. Um, we heard from one of our friends and listeners, Paul Verhu from Estonia. Um, he chimed in and, um, and followed up on one of the questions. He said, hey, guys, uh, congratulations on another great episode. I wanted to share with you my thoughts regarding the first question you addressed, how to organize the information generated by building a hospital. I understood the question that is about how to organize the information after the project is completed. So in essence, that is reference information and doesn't include action reminders. You gave a great answer. And what I would have liked to add is to suggest to Jerry to apply the natural planning model to this project, i.e. how to organize reference information. So walking through the steps, purpose, principles, while success, brainstorming, etc., would have provided him and his team some clarity on the best way to organize this to fit the purpose. So thanks a lot, Paul. That's a, that's a great suggestion. Um, yeah, really just wanted to to add that uh, to to uh, to Jerry and anyone else listening who might be managing a lot of information. Perhaps the natural planning model might be uh, be a good approach. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. And, um, and for those who want to know what the natural planning model is, we have an episode for that as well. So look through yes. the backlog and you will find that somewhere. I don't remember the, the name. I'll put it in the show notes. Put it in the show notes. Good. And for those of you who saw, we were smiling a lot before um, we started today's episode. The reason we did this is because I, I tried to to um, uh, before we started our um, recording before I opened the recording session or the, the session with, with Lars I tried to write his name with the use of Siri um, she, and I wanted to, to write Lars Rotskin Henriksen as a part of you know we are looking for ways of doing things faster and I my mouth is faster than my fingers on the keyboard so I was hoping that I can uh, write Lars Rotskin Henriksen and uh, what came out Lars Rock Henriksson with a ck so it's uh, it's it's not perfect yet so <laughs> <laughs> well you can just rename me in your uh, phone address book and everything will be fine yeah <laughs> large rock <laughs> <laughs> hello mr rock okay um yes recurring projects very interesting topic um in the pre-show we also talked about you know how would we attack this and um and it is the recurring project could also be a an at least a semi answer for for uh, the last uh, episode um, where we had the listener question about you know this how do you uh, handle recurring projects when the project comes mm. back and we are going to be as hands-on as we can we will for those of you who are not l seeing this uh, but listening to us you might want to swing into one of our or either Lars or my um, YouTube channel to see this episode because we are going to show you our tools and how we are, you know, practically are handling this. Um, because we both use um, a way or a method for copying good thoughts that we already made before that we are just adjusting as we go along. 
So, so how would you like to attack this um, on a more, let's say, not esoteric, but you know, on a more theoretical level before we get hands-on, Lars? <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought a good starting point might be for us to just clearly define the project versus the areas of focus. So Horizon 1 versus Horizon 2, because we do tend to see in um, in seminars and coaching when we work with people that there, uh, there can be some mix-ups in between the two. So it can be helpful to really distinguish the two and, and make it clear what we are, are talking about. So projects in the basic definition is anything that requires more than one action step to complete. Um, time frame is up to 12 months, but can be certainly be less than that, just a, a few weeks maybe for, for some projects. Um, as opposed to the areas of focus, which are things that you don't check off. So where projects have a defined outcome, that's what you're looking to achieve, the desired outcome, and you can check that off when, when what is done. Um, the areas of focus is what you are maintaining at certain standards. So this is what you're either have focused on or are responsible for in your work and life. So that would be, <clears throat> you know, at home, it would be, uh, you know, your finances, uh, relationships, uh, hobbies, things like that. At work, it really depends on your work, what you do. But if you look at your job description or you talk to your boss, what do they expect you to maintain at certain standards? And then from that area of focus, uh, projects will spring out, uh, I think was the way you way you phrased it earlier. Um, anything we need to add to that in, in relation to to uh, managing recurring projects? No, I just want to, if we can stay a little in the areas, um, uh, if you look at them as, you can give them different wording, which means different things for different people. But so, so areas of focus might be a little, you know, cloudy, f fluffy for some people. But um, if you add responsibility, so what are you responsible for or what do you want to focus on? So it's what you're responsible for and what you want to focus on. I don't know if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah so and and they they have no end they're no beginning they just are that yeah. either you have them you, you don't so so if you look at areas of responsibility and uh, focus it could be uh, Lars is the managing director of productive Denmark this is his one of his roles and one of his areas of responsibility in his work life uh, sorry, his work, um, <laughs> not work life, because that's work life balance. Now I'm getting my <laughs> allegorical self going here. So, um, and and another responsibility. Lars is a dad, so am I. So that's a res you know sp responsibility that we have to maintain at some certain standards. And when you look at them, if you look at them on your on a regular basis in your I, for instance, your weekly review, you will be able to see if they are maintained at that standard you would like them to be maintained at, or you will look at them, you will go, mm -mm. you will have, mm -hmm. you know, some kind of uh, cognitive dissonance happening, and then the project will be birthed out of yeah. that areas of responsibility. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm using that. I don't know where I got that from. Maybe it's from David even, but I, I use that as a, a good phrase because an area of focus has no end, no start. It's something you have or you do not have, but that the areas of area of focus or responsibility will give birth to projects when mm. you feel you have a cognitive dissonance. That yeah. that cognitive dissonance is big enough for you to feel, I really need to do something about this. <laughs> I don't yeah. feel good about and just this. on that topic I mean diving more into areas of focus is something that we did in the first episode of this year so 2022 if you're listening in the future so uh, also highly recommend go back I refer uh, a lot of people that are you know somewhat seasoned GCDers to to maybe go back and, and watch that episode because that's where we we share some of the um, uh, the ways to to approach this and, and build your own Mm. Um, and of course, just wanted to add that, yeah, so we don't, you know, that you don't put a check mark next to these areas of focus. On the other hand, of course, they will change as time uh, and, and life uh, moves on. You switch your job or something else happens where, where things change in your life, then uh, your areas of focus and accountability will need to be updated uh, accordingly. Mm. Yeah. Areas of focus, responsibility and accountability. Now we have the full mm. definition, I think. <laughs> you used the accountability. I thought it might be good to add that. Mm, okay, yeah. good. So, so, and then recurring projects. What is recurring for those of, you know, not native English speakers? 
What does recurring yeah. mean? Yeah, so something that that happens uh, again and again. Yeah, <laughs> I would say in the simplest, yeah, in the simplest uh, definition. So things uh, that repeating. happen on. A, Yes, exactly. On an ongoing basis, things that will happen. So um, it could be um, things that you have to do on a you know a recurring schedule. It could be things that you do ad hoc that, that you need to, to take care of. That would be a project in your GTD system. So um, let's say in my world, um, one of the things that I have to make sure is uh, right now that we have everything ready for the uh, closing of the, the books, the financial year from, from last year. I need to make sure mm -hmm. that uh, our uh, accountants have all of the information that they, they need. So that's a recurring project for me that happens uh, every year um, and uh, something that I need to, to deal with. So that's an example mm -hmm. of a recurring project on a yearly basis. Uh, for me mm. um, on a more regular basis uh, recurring projects for me are speeches seminars things like that mm -hmm. that will happen that 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 I need to um, to deliver prepare for follow up on uh, make mm -hmm. sure that everything is, is working as it uh, as it should mm. and just as an addition it could be that you can use this on um, you know, preparing to leave for vacation, you know, uh, yeah. or you know, just make lists of, I, we use this in the home, or at least I use it in the home. I share it with my wife, she never looks at it, but hey, <laughs> it's there. Um, but it is, um, um, you know, a checklist that I use before we leave the home. In the, you know, if we are leaving the home for one week, um, and there, you know, you have to look at the, uh, is something going to smell in the refrigerator? Do we need to throw something <laughs> out? Uh, empty the garbage, close the windows, you know, check that, um, uh, you know, uh, none of the, the, the ovens are covered by something that can start a fire, um, just to make sure that everything is ready for some for mm -hmm. vacation. And that's also a recurring project. And uh, for me, that's, you know, recurring projects can be called checklists with next actions, ne predefined next actions. So I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that, that would be one of the, you know, the key things to, to, for people to reflect on is to start looking for these recurring projects. So what do you know actually happens on a regular basis and really learn from yourself. So the next time you, mm. you, uh, you, you see this project coming, then you already have perhaps a checklist to support mm. you and that that would be a, a great addition and something that's, you know, at least in my experience, it, it shows up pretty clearly for people mm. who typically when people attend the level two seminar, because then exactly. they are somewhat seasoned GTDers, but they also, you know, there's just something that happens when you start mm -hmm. to do GTD and you get things under control and you want to just start to help the future version of yourself. So you want mm -hmm. to get ahead and say, well, all right, well, now I learned from this. Um, let's not repeat that mistake, <laughs> you know, so let's that, let me set up a, a checklist or some other way to remind me of what, what is going to happen here. Um, so that next time I mm -hmm. do it, I'll be, be that much smarter and it will be so much easier for me to, to do. Yeah, exactly. And then you mentioned the level two seminars in, in that, um, in, in those seminars, you, you also, or we also take you on a deep dive into your areas of focus, responsibility and accountability so mm -hmm. that they are mapped out or at least you have a, you know, a, a, a draft of the first map of your, yeah. so, that, yeah. so, and we that, do that and we do the checklist and, exactly. and both of those in combination is just so a game changer for, for many people. And it certainly was for, for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, just as you learn, as you start to, to have this perspective on, on life, then you will start just, you know, help the future version of yourself automatically. The same, most simple mm -hmm. version I'm reminded now, because I see the nice green plant behind you, mm -hmm. um, behind me, there used to be some green plants that mm -hmm. I would just automatically water. And then I didn't automatically water them <laughs> for a while. <laughs> so, 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 so they are now gone. Um, so I have on my shopping list to buy a few new plants and, uh, on the weekly review checklist, I have expanded to check if the plants need water. So it can be, you know, on the bigger grand scale and, and important things like getting the, the books closed and it uh, can be just the uh, basic day to day stuff. Exactly. So, so, and in, and what's, um, you know, that we, we are talking about, you know, getting things done at a, you know, a little higher level today. Mm. That, and if you are a beginner, this might be for inspiration for you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, for those of you who has been 
um, doing GTD for a while, maybe attended a level two, it might be a repetition a little bit about how you can mm. make this practically. Um, but we are um, going to be very hands-on. I'm going to show you my OmniFocus uh, templates um, folder, show you how that works. And uh, the idea here is that we want to make this as practical as possible for you. So, so where do you have your recurring projects? Where do you keep them in which I told you I have mine in uh, some of my checklists are in notes for iOS mm -hmm. and Mac. Uh, where do you keep and, and in OmniFocus and where do you keep yours? Maurice? Yeah, split split in, uh, in two places as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, so some of them, uh, just a few are mm -hmm. in, uh, in Todoist mm -hmm. and the rest are all in OneNote. Um, and that's really, uh -huh. you know, been using that for 10 years, I think. And it's just sort of started there and it has that nice flexibility of being able to add things. Um, so, so now I keep them, keep them there. Mm. Do you share any of the lists with anyone? Yes, my complete uh, notebook is actually, uh, or the one for, for personal use, is uh, is actually shared with my with my wife. So we both have uh, have access to this and go, can mm. go in and check. So, um, like you said, in relation to yeah, travels could be one thing. Uh, packing lists uh, could be also closing down the summer house, opening up the summer house. I just used that one mm. this this weekend to make sure that we have uh, have everything going on. Just on that note, as an example, one of the things that I had on my checklist was to check the fire extinguisher to see that it was mm. still valid that you know the the gauge was still at the at the green level and it wasn't so ah. just an example of, of what you can catch because i would never look at that by myself i would not no. extinct it. Mm, let me go and have a look at the fire extinguisher yeah. to see how yeah. it's doing um but now i did because i had the mm. the uh, opening the summer house checklist that i walked through uh found that and you know yeah so that's that's gonna go to the recycling place and uh, a new uh, fire extinguisher showed up on my uh, shopping list Good. So then just now you'll be safe again, which is exactly. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, we'll never need it, but uh, if we do, we we will have a working one. Yes. And I let me let me. <laughs> I have been in a fire once. Uh, not been in a fire, mm. but I was in a fire that we need to to extinguish ourselves. And um, working fire extinguishers are crucial for that mm. job. So, if not, there's going to be a lot of buckets of water and a lot of, you mm. know cleaning up after you have to clean up <laughs> yeah. but water and powder is not good so powder is easier mm. Mm. yeah exactly okay um so so for for our listeners who are in would you like to go first by the way can you, i don't mm, know if, sure. have, have you tried That'd to share your screen have you tried that before um i don't have a good section to to share so i think from my perspective the ones that i will be be um the way I can share it is probably best to just describe it how I could mm. uh, how I could do it. Um, so, like I said, I I, sh I, uh, I have my recurring projects or checklists in in this case in in um, in two different places. Um, mm. I have some in in Todoist, and I have most of them in in OneNote. Mm. Um, so the the OneNote things we just touched on now, which are really you know um, the ones that I will pick up and, and, and walk through ad hoc, so to speak, uh, in the sense that they don't have any specific dates attached to them. So so when I have seminars and speeches, I'll be follow-ups and waiting for us and things like that um, that I want to do. So I'll keep that in my my active system. Uh, in OneNote, I have all my my checklists. Uh, not, not that it's a project in that sense, but but things like the weekly review, for example, is a, is a good example of that. Um, opening the summer house, closing the summer house, uh, all my packing lists, all those kinds of things. Those mm. are in my uh, my OneNote setup, um, and also my notes for coaching. So mm. that is actually where I keep my coaching notes. Um, I am looking into transitioning this to somewhere else, but but um, right now, for for now, I have a uh, um, a set of uh, pages about I would say fifteen different pages for you know the uh, the uh, the starting interview um, adjusted to whether it's with a executive or executive assistant or a, a, a normal coaching uh, flow and then depending on whether it's uh, in person or virtual sessions I will have uh, templates actually for uh, in in the virtual case for each of the uh, the sessions so I know that we'll cover all the stuff that we'll want to cover and, you know in in, in coaching 
the premise really is that we will go wherever you need to go, but I want to make sure that we covered all the, the bases. So, so it's a very, let's say, flexible uh, checklist in that sense, in that I will, I will work it uh, as it makes sense for the, for the coaching client. Um, and also, you know, we have follow-up calls, so I have uh, templates for that, things that I want to follow up on. Also, just a placeholder for me to to capture notes during the, the coaching session or transfer notes during co- the coaching session to to the things that I want to follow up on when we when we follow up. So those those are the kinds of things that I keep in keep in one note. It's it's very straightforward. Some of them are with the tables, and I have my questions, a room for answers. Some of them are simply for the basic checklist, just uh, you know the the standard to do option in uh, in one note that you can then uh, mark next to it, and then you can check them off as you as you go along. So that mm-hmm. one is is pretty straightforward. The other one that I use is in Todoist, and Todoist really, um, you know, th- that is where I use the um, uh, for the level one, level two, level three seminars, uh, speeches, uh, and introductory webinars. So in Denmark, we do just a, a quick uh, thirty-minute introduction for for free for people who uh, are curious about GTD, want to learn more, I have a, a quick. Um, quick template for for that. And the way I've done it for those of you who use Todoist is simply to create a a project. They simplified it, uh, I think probably a year back now. In the old days you had to, so you would create the project, uh, not really a project uh, in in that sense, an active project. So I have a a project called templates and and sub projects to that are the specific uh, templates for each of the, the seminars. Um, so those are really, you know, have grown over the years. Every time I learn something new, I'll add that to the list. But there are some uh, preparation that I need to do for each of the seminars. There's a packing list. There's stuff that I need to do afterwards, follow up, uh, mm. and, and, and so on. Um, so they will go in there. Um, and you can set it up with the relative dates, and you can, can set up some nice things. So when you go in and, and duplicate that project and make it move it into the active system, then you can, can work it from there. Um, right now, I still do it manually because uh, I haven't found a, a nice way to do that. You can do it based on, so if I'm copying it today, then seven days from now, remind me to do something. But, you know, people book, <laughs> some people book uh, speeches uh, two weeks in advance, and some people do it four, six months in advance. So um, it hasn't, I haven't really found a nice way to 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 integrate that in, in the Todoist setup. Um, and just a note, like, like I said, uh, they made it simpler uh, because they offered now to duplicate the project. They have been for a while, but for those of you who might have come across it a while back, uh, mm-hmm. back then we would have to export the, uh, the, the templates. You could export a CSV file, for example, and then you would create a new project, upload that CSV file, and then populate the fields. Today you could just duplicate the projects and, Woo-hoo. you know, I, I use it, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, no, so I, I, um, I really, um, uh, you know, use that feature a lot. Uh, that's, mm-hmm. you know, all of the speeches, coaching and seminar, everything mm-hmm. uh, in relation to that, uh, all of that is, is captured as, uh, as templates that I can just uh, copy and move into my, so I have a, a group called 2022 and uh, everything that, uh, that happens where I need a, a checklist or like a recurring project in, in today's uh, topic, um, I'll put it in there. So I can clearly see where I am with each of them and, you know, you have no chance of, you know, if you're planning five speeches at once, um, how are you going to know at what stage each of those are? Have we clarified where we're going to be? Have we clarified, you know, have they received the, the pre-information? Have I followed up with them? Have we invoiced them? All that kind of stuff hmm. is captured in those uh, in those checklists. So I think those are the sort of two key places where I have those kinds of recurring projects. And hmm. um, I think it, um, it works. Overall, it works well for me. Mm-hmm. What about you? Um, yeah, I can show what I'm doing in um, in notes, uh, and that is iOS and uh, macOS notes. Um, I'm I use you know I'm just going to show you what we do when before travel to Turkey. And I will see if I can make this happen by do this. Uh, ah, you can also see this, and I will hide that. Let me see if I can find my second note here because I will have to hide this, I think. Yes, now. Now this is um, before travel to Turkey, which my wife and I travel to Turkey all the time. Um, We have family there, so we go there often. And uh, this is uh, three days before I have one checklist. And at the day of uh, leaving, I have one. And three days before I must remember to, to, 
uh, close for so we don't receive newspapers I do uh, still read two newspapers every day uh, keeps me uh, connected to the world I like paper and then we need to at least before we need to to make order for something called a has code that is no longer needed anymore because they've stopped doing that so i can just delete that now i updated it um, and then i have to make sure i make an out of office um, uh, message i just click the links and it goes straight to my my out of office um, uh, you know what is settings for my, my, the, the um, out of office and on the, the day of traveling i can then uh, when i've done this i can just detect them of oops uh now i got a question if i want to have sorting no <laughs> i do not thank you very much i want to have them in the order i already have them and then as i go along i will just tick them off check the, uh, the refrigerator throw out garbage pull out the the, the um, electric cords everywhere turn down the temperature on ovens, check windows and veranda door. And then the last thing I will now update since we are now here is uh, screw po alarm, which means turn on alarm. <laughs> we just have an alarm system installed. So so and and when I finished I can do this and, and this list is ready for be reused. Um, I will go back and I want to show you this is a uh, project I just started uh, a few or a month ago where I know this I will need to do again because I'm going to I'm have I had some problems with my Mac I have an elderly iMac who slowly started dying and uh, so I decided to buy a MacBook Air I needed a, a travel uh, light travel uh, Mac so I bought a MacBook Air and I am going to, and I, you know, I, I know I need to install these um, these apps uh, from Setup. Setup is a Mac app store outside the App Store where you can subscribe to apps. And I need to have my node, renamer, iStat menu screens, etc. And I know I will do this again because I will set up a Mac from scratch again when I, in the autumn, I hope to be in the position where I can buy an iMac. I hope that will be new, some new iMacs coming so that we can have that. And I want to make sure that um, I can use that easy and I don't have to then think about which apps I need to install. Uh, does that make sense? Mm, absolutely, and it's nice, you know, that you can just share these. And of course, for the people listening, uh, Martin walked through the the detail. But just for those uh, watching, it's nice and easy just to see these. And I think in a lot of cases with GTD, you 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 might you might have read the book, you walk through it, you understand it. But it's just so helpful to see examples of this. And I think that's mm. also why you know people, for example, appreciate the podcast in some cases where we just give examples of these things. Because mm. at least for myself and my own practice, I know that it made a huge difference once I started to understand how other people might want to might want to do these things. Mm. Exactly. So um, the next thing I would like to show is. Uh, this this is my um, this is OmniFocus for those of you who don't know this it's um, an iOS and Mac OS and web only the web is by the way a little uh, um, uh, short of being f fully featured uh, but um, this is for those of you who are using this um, here I've in I have my templates folder I can of course close and open that and I've focused now on templates so you can see the rest of my system um, but this is my templates folder where I have four templates that I use all the time so for instance I have um, what, what you call a GTD startup kit if you're a client of ours you want to do um, a full fundamentals and uh, an installation lab that's called we call a startup kit uh, it's uh, VILT. This is virtual. What do I need to What do I need to remember and do before um, uh, engaging in this? And with um, uh, OmniFocus, you can create duplicate projects very easily. It's just right click and then you know uh, duplicate. This mm, has been that's what you do today in Todoist as well. Yeah. 
So, so, but the, when you take it a bit further, which I have, is I, I use, there is, um, um, I, I think it is an Apple script programmer. His name is Kurt Clifton. Hi, Kurt, if you're listening to us, thank you so much for creating this. It's a little Apple script that I have installed that lives up here. So when I choose one of the, um, the projects, and I can also look down in the, in the um, notes section here, I have to make... Um, uh, how this works is that I have to make what I want to, to be copied in. And the way that this is worked is anything that's in, in brackets here, you know, in uh, quotes, uh, like kunde, client, dato, uh, date, and, uh, and the contact person I have. If I now trigger this script, it will prompt me for those, um, you know, brackets or quotes questions. So if I cl click here, it will ask me, I will go so you can see it. What, what is the date to date? And since I'm very lazy, so I'm, I'm using uh, text expander to create the date, of <laughs> course. And um, what is the, sorry, what's the, the client name? Let's say this is um, Coca-Cola. I don't know. We don't have them as a client. I can use that as an ex ex uh, example. And uh, what's the contact person is um, Chris Kringle. It's a guy, I think. A Kringle with with a K is a cr yes, I think K. Um, okay, so Chris Kringle, and what happened now is that I can't show you this because if I show you, I will show you my full system. I can't do that. I'm sorry. Boring. But if, yeah, but what you will see is that. Okay, I will go off camera for two seconds here, <laughs> and I will show you. I am boring. Thank you, <laughs> Lars. <Lord Sport. laughs> <laughs> you see, unfocus. I, I didn't sh share anything, so so really, I so, shouldn't, shouldn't complain. No, no, no. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, focus. Okay, now I can share this with you. And the reason I can't share the system is there's a lot of client information here I can't show you. But this is a GTD uh, startup kit with uh, Coca-Cola and the name. It's a VILT. That's the name of the project. And I have to create... Um, a digital evaluation form three days before the date. Uh, now that I have a question for myself: Do I have I received the, the number of um, uh, participants and contact info from Chris Kringle uh, one week before? And th this is giving myself some instructions on when do I need to have this. And then I can choose either to put them in the calendar by drag and drop, or I can just manually move them to the calendar as deadlines for myself during, so I can follow up when I need to follow up. Hmm. So that's, and, and as you can see, I have created links, for instance, for creating the, the digital evaluation sh folder, sorry, uh, the form. Um, and that's in my, um, that's in the notes field. So if I need something that's, and I, I will need to make, um, we have some, um, uh, what do you call that? Certification of course completion. We create that mm. and print that. And I can then, I have the, all the links. And the, and the reason I'm doing this, I'm, the reason I'm using this is because I can think smart and clearly um, after, before I do a seminar one time. And then after I just have to maintain how smart was it this time. So how well did this work this time? Does that make sense? Mm, absolutely, absolutely. And and because you are, we are having smart thoughts all the time. You are clever as a person, and capture that cleverness and that creativity, and um, just put it on repeat. Because there are times in your life where you're not very creative, not very smart. <laughs> I say <laughs> Friday afternoon. Anyone? want to raise their hand <laughs> i think they might want to because yeah. there are th yes thank you lars uh solidarity is a cool thing i uh, know but uh the the um, the idea here is that you must and getting things done is all about being really lazy about things and you know how can you get more of the right stuff down you uh, done using less time and effort um and, and this is just harnessing your creativity, harnessing your smartness, and put it somewhere where you can, you know, put it on repeat or yeah. recurring, if you may. 
so you don't mm. have to exactly. rethink and this this ties into i think we had an episode where we talked about um you know text expanders is am i correct or have you mm. yeah yeah we, we, we've about, touched on that before yeah. yeah so text expanders are are um where you can uh, you can type an abbreviation and get the the snippet you want of text or images or links or whatever you need uh, to populate wherever you need to populate and the reason we are doing this is because you you want to make make um, reuse of something that is good and um, so you think good and smart and write a long email you can use that on repeat and you you seemingly are intelligent uh, all the time when you are actually really dead tired and you know you can you can then pull on your f- former performance yeah <laughs> rely on the pr- previous smart version yeah, exactly so no but it's important to understand that kind of thinking um i was delivering a, a, a speech on friday uh, last week for a group of uh, lawyers um really smart people really you know an amazing organization actually very very focused on well-being one of their clear statements was to leave the office with more energy than when they arrived uh, mm-hmm. they have really implemented yeah i was i was really impressed and they had really implemented some 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 cool uh, uh, things and practices, uh, uh, standard Pomodoros on Friday, everyone at the office working in Pomodoros and, and things like mm. that. They had really, really worked on that. And I really tried to emphasize that kind of thinking that, you know, we are smart people. They are, they are, were and are smart people, but really try to capture that. And, you know, we're not that smart version all of the, all of the time. Mm. Yeah. And well, I'm I'm reminded. I also did a uh, did a seminar recently last week. I did a seminar for um, one of the biggest music festivals here in Norway. Um, the, the the managers of that or the people who make that happen, and uh, we were talking a lot about how can you use your energy level well. You know, getting things done is about creating and b- being nice to the future you remove all the obstacles so when the the future little you know your little dumber a little more lazy and, and tired <laughs> version of you uh, has a runway to run instead of um you know um what do you call that i think i asked that before do we have an answer to this what is heckle up in english <laughs> hedge oh, run i don't know <laughs> no, what I do don't you call think that. In, I, in, in, yeah. in, as an athlete, you run a track, and there is uh, hedges you have to jump across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. J- jump, jumping run. <laughs> jumping hedges. No, I don't know what uh, that, that is called. So, if you know what that is, please send us an email. Uh, illuminate mm-hmm. me because I don't know. But it is or Google Translate. But yeah. or Google Translate. Yes, that's also a possibility. But I'm really lazy. So let's outsource this. <laughs> if anybody has the answer, send it to us at podcast at gtdnordic.dk. Podcast at gtdnordic.dk. Please help us. So, <laughs> but but the idea of the of this um, uh, the the. Um, the runway vs the 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 hedge run let's call it that is that when you have a runway you have no obstacles there is nothing hindering you of running so if you're really tired you can just go tick things off your your next actions list where it says i'll call bob regarding this uh, talk about mention pdf and so and so and that makes it easy for you to be clever and intelligent when you're really not you just have to ke- do the things you have to engage and and, and um and do the things you've decided to do and 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 that is so much easier than having that little unclear thinking done on your next actions lists where you go what did i really want to do here that Mm. that is when you meet the hedge you run and then you have to stop and you have to think and you have to say how am i going to climb this hedge how am i going to get over this how what do i need to do here and and that is where a lot of people end up procrastinating or just giving up um you know you can you can, you just go to your you know whatever is your dark playground for you know where you play when you don't need to play this is by the way from the <laughs> uh, uh, tim urban uh, he has an excellent that ted talk called inside the mind of a master procrastinator i think you have to uh, link to that as well in, in here so that people can see that really good about procrastination the ted talk there and 
the, the idea here is that you should not give yourself an excuse for not doing what you've decided to do. But be, to be able to remove the excuse, you have to be really clear on your clarification and organization of your th stuff. You can't just organize unclear stuff and think that getting things done is going to work for you. Hmm. So, yeah. And this, this, this uh, recurring project ties into that uh, very easily because then you don't have to think again. You've done all the thinking in advance. You just have to make a copy dummy. And <laughs> I'm talking to myself now. A copy dummy and you can do this. You don't have to think um, a lot. And you have, don't have to make new decisions. You just have to populate whatever you need to populate. And um, for those who I, I just remembered, we, we, I didn't mention that there is this Apple script. We will make a link to that page where you will find that. Kurt Clifton's yep. page about um, populate um template what you, what did we call it again something something it's not important populate template placeholders yes thank you it's an omnifocus apple script that you can install so um anything we need to add to this episode i be are we at the end no i think we covered everything the only thing i don't know if we specified clearly enough was mm. uh, in the beginning to take us back to the the, the defining of projects versus areas of focus mm -hmm. um we started off by defining that just because we see people sometimes mix these up so i just yeah. wanted to reiterate that and make it clear to people that we don't want to mix these you know projects will will maybe come from the areas of focus but be careful that you don't have an area of focus which which you see as a project so mm. make sure that you actually define a project for that area of focus instead of just throwing it all in there especially if you have for example grouped your uh, next actions or, or, or by areas of focus for example mm. then just throw everything in there and it'll be one big mushy thing that you don't really see what you're working on mm. uh, if these are recurring projects create a project for that create yeah. a project for you know publishing that uh, that article or mm. getting that uh, you know all the the finances uh, done mm. or whatever it might be make sure that you do still create projects for these and don't just mix them into two areas of focus really important uh, because I, and I, I a very good point Lawrence because I also see that when I coach people going to their lists they have they have instead of having um, projects they have areas of focus like budgeting economy mm. legal and I ask okay where's the verb <laughs> where's where's mm -hmm. the finishing now how does how does done look and they go, I will never be done with this. And exactly, this is not a project. This is an area of focus or responsibility. So, exactly. so if you don't have a verb defining when you're finished and it doesn't have an end, uh, it's an area of focus. So, mm. And you don't have recurring uh, areas of focus unless you are <laughs> reincarnating. <laughs> and can no, remember no, what happened. Got deep. No, no, yeah, now we got very deep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no, but I think we can, can wrap words? it up. Otherwise, yeah. No, I think I think we can we can wrap it up, and and we always do mm. with a quick reminder to head on over to gtdnordic.com to have a look around because on that website you'll find links to each of the country websites for the Nordic countries, and on each of those sites you can find articles about GTD, uh, newsletters, groups on social media, um, all of our offerings coaches, speeching, speeches, coaching, and seminars, both virtual and physical. And um, you can find a lot of things there, clearly. Uh, if you're outside the uh, NordicsGettingThingsDone.com is the place to go to find your local partners. And I think one last plug for the GCD Summer Camp. We are now yeah. approaching 35 participants from 10 countries. It's uh, amazing to see and we're really excited. We had planning meetings uh, last week to just finalize the schedule. It'll be so much fun and mm. yeah, really looking forward to it. So gcdsummercamp.com. Um, we'll, we'll hopefully see some of you, some of you there. Mort and I will be there. It'll be a, a great weekend. Indeed. And lastly, as always, we really hope that you find these episodes valuable. If GCD has made a difference in your life, please do help us share this podcast by giving it a rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen. It really helps the discoverability of the podcast, which will help more people learn GCD, which is why we are here. Exactly. Exactly. And um, until next time, people, stay safe and stay productive. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.